Mr. President, this week we are deciding whether or not we're going to shut down the government of the United States of America again. Again. It was about a year and a half ago that a senator from Texas on the other side of the aisle took to the floor and called for shutting down the government of the United States of America, protesting President Obama's Affordable Care Act. He did it. And the hardship that that created for people all across the United States who relied on essential government services is well documented. The impact it had on the men and women who work for our government, also well documented. And it cost our economy. It was a bad thing to do. It was a political strategy which, on reflection, was the absolute worst, to shut down our government. Well, this week, we face another shutdown. And this time, it's the Department of Homeland Security. This department is the one department that is charged with keeping America safe from the threat of terrorism. And it was created after 9-11 because we wanted to make sure we put together 22 agencies that worked together to protect us. Oh, you see them in so many different places. This agency runs the Coast Guard. Their cutters are patrolling Lake Michigan and our coastline, on Atlantic and Pacific, and in the Gulf of Mexico as well. You see them when you go to the airport, TSA, that's under the supervision of the Department of Homeland Security. You may not know it, but your local fire department is depending on grants from this same agency so they can buy new equipment, train the people who are responding to the fires in your community. Over and over again, the Department of Homeland Security invests in the safety of America. So why, why in God's name would we have a political strategy to stop funding the Department of Homeland Security? That's exactly what we're faced with, exactly, and come the end of this week, this department will basically lose its funding and be on emergency status. Why would we ever do that? At a time when we're warned about terrorist groups attacking malls across America, we are going to shut down the agency, stop funding the agency that protects us against terrorism in the streets of America? At a time when ISIS is kidnapping people from all over the world, beheading them, burning them to death, killing them by execution, we're going to drop our guard and say, well, we're not going to fund the Department of Homeland Security. Why in the world would any politicians in either House of Congress think this is a wise tactical move? It turns out that it was sent to us by the House of Representatives, this funding bill, on the condition that we take up the debate over immigration policy in America. I think we need to debate that policy. I have no objection to it. I feel very strongly about some aspects of it. But why would we make the Department of Homeland Security play the role of hostage over this debate on immigration? The right thing to do to protect America and the people who live here is to fund the Department of Homeland Security. I offered a unanimous consent on the floor here two weeks ago asking the Republicans to join the Democrats in funding this department. Senator McConnell, Majority Leader, objected. I think that was a mistake. Now I think we understand, as we reach this deadline of shutting down this valuable agency of our government, that we can't let this happen. What is it about this immigration debate that has driven some politicians in Congress to the point where they're threatening to shut down this department, to cut off its funding? It turns out that they object to some of the executive orders issued by the President on immigration. Remember, it was the Senate that passed a comprehensive immigration bill two years ago. I was part of the group that wrote it. And we passed it on the floor with 68 votes, and the Republican House of Representatives refused to even call the bill, or any bill, on the subject. And when they failed to do anything to fix our broken immigration system, the President said, I'm going to issue some executive orders to deal with this problem if Congress refuses to act, and he did. The Republicans hate those executive orders by President Obama like the devil hates holy water. They hate them so much that they would shut down the Department of Homeland Security in protest over the President's action. One of the things that troubles them the most is something called DACA. DACA is a shorthand description of the President's executive order, which allows those who would qualify under the DREAM Act 
to stay in the United States and not be deported. The DREAM Act's a bill I introduced 14 years ago. I introduced it because I learned there were children brought to America by their undocumented parents who grew up in this country, who went to school in this country, who were good citizens in America, who had no future because they had no home. My DREAM Act said if you were one of those children brought here by your parents, we're not going to hold you responsible for your parents' decision. We will give you a chance to become legal in America. That's what the DREAM Act said. That's all it said. And the President's executive order said, we're not going to deport these young children now growing up in America. We're going to give them a chance to stay here, to study here, to work here. The Republicans hate this, many of them. Many of them just hate this idea of giving these young people a chance. And sadly, what they're doing is turning down an opportunity for America to benefit from some of these extraordinary young people. Time and again, I've come to the floor of the Senate to tell the stories of these dreamers, and I'd like to tell another one today. This lovely young woman is Mitty Del Rosario. Her parents brought Mitty to the United States from the Philippines when she was five years old. So there's no question about whether she was going to come or not. She was part of the family. She grew up in California. She was an excellent student, and her lifetime goal was to be a medical doctor. In high school, she was on the principal's honor roll, an AP scholar, received the Golden State Seal Merit Diploma, and a Governor's Scholar Award. Quite a student. Mitty was admitted to the University of California at Los Angeles, one of the nation's top universities. At UCLA, she volunteered as a research assistant. She wanted to get into a lab that studied the risk, high risk, of infants to develop autism. Mitty also volunteered while a student at UCLA as a crisis counselor for their peer helpline, advising students who were the victims of rape, child abuse, and substance abuse. She eventually became a trainer for new counselors. Mitty also volunteered as a mentor and tutor for at-risk middle school children in the city of Los Angeles. She graduated from UCLA with a degree in psychology, but her options were limited in terms of medical school because she's undocumented. She was unable to pursue her dream of becoming a doctor. Then in 2012, President Obama issued the executive order establishing the DACA program, allowing students like her a chance to stay in America and not be deported. Her whole world changed. She began working as a research assistant at the UCLA School of Medicine, and she's applied from there to attend medical school. She still volunteers at the Autism Research Lab, where she started her research career seven years ago. Her ambition? is to be part of the treatment and research effort on children with autism. She's also served as a peer mentor to 10 undergraduate students at UCLA. She wrote me a letter and she asked me to relay a message to members of Congress who are engaged in this debate on whether or not to shut down the DACA program, which gives her a chance to stay in the United States. In her words, she said, please, please listen to our stories. This is my home and the only country I know DACA gives us greater opportunities to give back to the country we love. This young lady, and millions like her, grew up in the classrooms of America pledging allegiance to that flag. It's the only flag they've ever known. They can only sing one national anthem, the national anthem that's closest to their heart for the United States of America. But now there's an effort underway by some politicians in Congress to deport her to send her back to the Philippines, to say that despite all that you've done with your young life, despite all the talents which you bring to Los Angeles and California, despite your promise to enter into the medical profession and to serve in a cause that all of us realize is so important, autism research, despite all that, leave America. That's the message that comes through in this bill sent to us by the House Republicans. They want to deport Mitty Del Rosario, deport her, send her out of this country, toss her away, despite all the investment that we've made and she's made in her life. Mitty and other dreamers like her have so much to contribute. 
The Republican bill that's before us would deport hundreds of thousands of young people just like her. And it would stop the president's effort to give the parents of citizens, American citizens, children, a chance to work temporarily, legally in the United States. It's hard to imagine that so many on the other side of the aisle have lost sight of who we are as a nation. We are a nation of immigrants. And that immigrant spirit has made us different in this world we live in. The people who risked everything to come to the United States, to a country where they may not have even spoken the language, who gave up everything and came here are a special brand of risk takers. And we have a little bit of their DNA in our blood. My mother was an immigrant, brought here at the age of two. Her son now serves in the United States Senate. As I've said so many times on the floor, that's my story. It's my family's story and it's America's story. I cannot believe that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle have forgotten America's history forgotten America's story, are willing to turn their backs on a young woman like this and say, we don't need you, you can leave. In fact, we're gonna make you leave. We're gonna force you out of this country. America won't be a stronger country if we deport Mitty and others like her. We're not gonna be a better country if we tear apart American families. We're not gonna be safer when we should be deporting criminals, not those who aspire to be medical researchers. Instead of trying to deport dreamers and mothers and fathers, congressional Republicans should support a clean appropriations bill. Let's do that. Let's pass a bill to fund the Department of Homeland Security. Let's get that done. So once again, we don't have a Republican shutdown of any branch of our federal government. Let's get that part done. And then if we're going to engage in a debate, a real debate on immigration, let's do it. The majority is controlled by the Republicans in the House and Senate. They can do that anytime they want. Let's engage in that debate, and let's do it in an honest fashion. Let's do it in a hopeful and positive view of what America's future will be when young people like Minnie Del Rosario have their chance to become part of an America that embraces talent and skill and thanks young people for the sacrifice they've made to make a better life for all of us who live in this nation. Mr. President, I yield the floor.